Hello everybody, my name is Ted Gloria. <clears throat> Let me give you some history. In the 90s, I sued the Roswell Police Department in the city, four times in federal court. And uh, in 09, it started up again. And uh, when it started up again in 09, me and my attorneys went down to the internal affairs, and the process is inadequate. And uh, on paper, after reading all these recommendations, they sound nice, but in the end, you have to remember, the city is in control of everything. They're in control of the complaint process, and they'll be in control of the outcome. And as I try to explain to people, City Hall is a business, like Kodak, Xerox, and Wegmans. And in the end, if they're not in control of the complaint process, and let it go to an independent person, there will be more complaints sustained, which will open them up to civil liability. That's why they have to, it's imperative, that they stay in control of the complaint process. And, uh, you know, getting back to uh, PSS, about two months ago, my attorney filed a lawsuit on behalf of an African-American man who stopped at a stop sign. Officers from across the street put their spotlight on on the driver door to identify his race. And after he went, made a complete stop, went through the stop sign, these officers turned around, pulled him over. He said that he didn't make a complete stop. Well, he said there were drugs and guns found in the car. Some people say, well, you know, sometimes the end justifies the means. But the officers didn't know that there was a red light camera right above where this gentleman made a full stop, complete stop. Spent four months in jail. Was caught on video. I got the video right here live. A Supreme Court judge made a ruling to dismiss two serious felonies because he said it was ambiguous that the officers submitted two false police reports. And you know what? These two officers are on the patrol every day. They hadn't even been suspended with pay into an internal investigation. So when you have something like this caught on video and nothing is done, the community has no credibility in the police department, the chief, or PSS. And I'm going to make one last statement. Nothing here in Rochester will ever change until they did what they just did in New Orleans last month, which is the Civil Rights Division of the U.S. Department of Justice needs to immediately do a complete and thorough investigation of certain members of the Rochester Police Department that abuse people's rights because the systems in place for officers to police themselves are useless or non-existent. The end product should be a consent decree, an agreement between the U.S. Department of Justice and city officials that will establish guidelines and impose conditions that must be followed by members of the Rochester, New York Police Department. Historically, the police have forced police department to revise their policies and change the way they deal with the general public. So Control the use. Wrap up, please, sir. Yes, sir. Can I finish this last paragraph? No. Sentence. Control the use of force and don't violate the civil rights of citizens and they must document everything along the way. process that um, you speak of being independent still involves the police investigating the complaint. Is that correct? The police are still the people who are here. <coughs> Even if you have an advocate, someone holding your hand through this, which is a nice gesture, but if the police are still there to investigate the complaints about them, I don't understand um, how that is considered independent. So I, I feel like that's a uh, the fundamental flaw to this whole process. If we don't have an independent civilian review board, we're not going to have any police accountability because those who oppress us will not voluntarily give up their power to oppress us. Um, so that is, is a real sticking point and I don't, I don't understand how we can get past that. Um, the discipline issue, I, I don't feel like the, the chief has um, made any effort to uh, discipline officers. It, it, I mean, he, he comes out publicly very quickly to defend officers who shoot and kill people. Um, so I, I would 
really prefer that someone else uh, had the power to discipline officers. And um, really this systemic issue of the police violating people's rights and abusing their power, I think, is um, extremely deep. And uh, really, we're looking at this um, kind of nationwide, um, maybe you know, worldwide uh, problem of the police uh, of keeping <laughs> um, popular movements down. You know, they, they act as um, the uh, repression um, to activists and movements. And I mean, I'm, I'm personally in disbelief that um, Council Member McFadden, that you would believe that this would really have a, an impact on this, this really underlying issue of police abuse, um, knowing that they, they will <laughs> um, violate their own rules, they will lie, uh, they will lie um, under oath, they will lie in their police reports, and they will harass and intimidate people. Um, seeing that last summer, um, I mean, you told me not to be alone, you told me that they would come after me. And, um, you know, I, I know that you know that this is true, and so a, a lot of time has passed. Um, I, I don't really believe that the police can investigate themselves. Uh, so I, I think that this whole issue needs to go back to the drawing board and we need to find a really independent <coughs> civilian review board. 1776, a group of Americans got together, who were not Americans yet, and fought oppression and fought for something that they so dearly believed. And that was to have rights, to be heard, to have a representative form of government. Now, these individuals were the cream of their crop. They came up with a system of government with checks and balances so that no one branch of government has any more power than the other. There are amendments in the Constitution according to the Bill of Rights and the 14th Amendment that specifically state, and I quote, no state, city, or any type of government shall abridge the people's rights to assemble peacefully, to be heard freely, to basically more or less speak their opinion, and that the rights should be protected by due process with equal enforcement for everybody. That still holds true today. And Mr. Deacon Nicole, you can shake your head all you want, but I've been down to PSS at your office numerous times filing complaints, and at the very last time that I filed a complaint, you became arrogant when I simply asked you a question as to why. It's that same type of arrogance that has pretty much fuel this entire situation with this city's police department. The police do not have the right to go around arresting innocent people because they don't like you because you challenge their authority. You don't have that right. The rights are reserved to the people. Now, just as Mr. Laurier has filed a lawsuit, just as Ms. Good has filed a lawsuit, I have also filed a lawsuit which is now in federal court for six, not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, six false arrests which were all ruled by a court of competent jurisdiction that the charges were false, they were lies, they were fabricated, officers lied on police reports, nothing happened to them. Those same officers that did this from over two years ago on one of them, I'm sorry, four years ago, as Ms. Deloria said, are still working. No discipline, nothing. This council, Mr. McFadden, having the Center for Dispute Settlement as an independent body does not satisfy the requirement to have an independent civilian review board with subpoena power. And when you mention subpoena power that this council has, that is not the subpoena power I believe that people are referring to. The subpoena power that people are referring to is the ability to bring witnesses in, the ability to get their hands on other things. That subpoena power you're talking about is useless. Useless in this process. This process is useless. The police protect themselves. You cannot have the police policing the police. They're not able to do that. They can't even police themselves when they're out on the street. In addition to that, I'm going to disclose something. I had a meeting with Mr. Rash, who was in.
Mr. Reitman's law department. And Mr. Reitman and I have had numerous discussions, haven't we, Mr. Reitman? Favorable discussions, but we've had them, haven't we, about situations. Mr. Ash, at that meeting that I had with him about a month ago, informed me that due to the problem and due to the fact that I've asked the federal judge for a restraining order against the police because of what's been going on, that they now have a separate task force that's been put together just to deal with me and my roommate at, at Grand Avenue. And that any time that we call 911, that those calls have to be completely reviewed from the bottom all the way up to the top and back down again. And this is a separate process just for us because of the fact, and he, I quote him, you, Mr. Hirsch, are the most vetted, vetted, and fear litigant that this city has ever known. This council needs to understand that this city has a problem with its executive branch of government. And that executive branch of government is made up of the mayor, who is the executive officer, the police department who enforces the laws, and then it's the DA's office that actually prosecutes the offenders. So one third of the executive branch of government in this city is not functioning properly. We cannot have officers basing people in handcuffs, arrest, beating up gay people at the garage. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish. Just give me one minute. And arresting innocent people because they don't like it because you sue them in federal court and you challenge their authority. You need an independent body that is separate from the police, detached from the police, okay, but is still attached to the police on paper, but in reality is separate, with <laughs> subpoena ability. That is the only way that you're going to solve that problem. I'm here uh, today to speak on behalf of those of us who have been serving on the civilian review board uh, for the last, uh, some of us, more than 10 years. The Civilian Review Board and the process that we currently have is a partnership. Uh, the partnership is a partnership that allows the civilians, we, to have full access to the investigative reports that are given by uh, or gathered by the police in investigating a claim. A claimant comes in to the Center for Dispute Settlement. That claimant has the opportunity to file a complaint or assist in filing a complaint. The complaint is transmitted uh, to the professional standards section. The professional standards section does a full investigation. That all the materials of the investigation are what the civilian review board gains access to including videos of the interviews with the claimants, including detailed tr transcripts of any witness reports, including audio reports of 911 calls at the inception of the alleged incident. All of that data is what those of us on the civilian review board gain access to. A key, I think, point is that those of us who serve are trained mediators. And let me say one thing about being a trained mediator. It means that you have committed yourself to viewing things from a point of fairness of seeing both sides of the coin, of being able to logically find the sequence of events and to then make judgments regarding the efficacy of the information that you have before you versus the point of discrepancies that bring, that generate out of your review of the material. I say this to you because I know the level of commitment of the people who serve on the Civilian Review Board. And I do know that when we look to see what the policies and procedures are of the police department, and I don't think we're here to argue about whether the policies and procedures are documented uh, as they are, but we have to deal with the policies and procedures as they currently exist. 
And our job is to determine is if an officer has violated the policies of the department or the procedures that they have been trained to uphold. Ma'am, can you wrap up, please? It doesn't go by procedure, it goes by the laws. That's what you have to uphold. I will wrap up by saying that the dedicated group of people that have been dealing with the civilian review, one of the civilian review board for years, have looked at every instance that they have come across from as great within the powers that they have. And when they find discrepancies, they make the recommendations accordingly in terms of disagreeing with anything, a finding that they have from the uh, police department. And those recommendations are moved to the, to the chief and are dealt with accordingly. I am not here to talk about what needs to be changed in the process in terms of what you don't like about what the overall uh, police uh, institution is doing. But I am here to say that you can rely on the way and the, and the, and the, uh, the fair judgment way that those from the Center for the Street Settlement handle the complaints, review the information, and make judgments in terms of whether an officer has violated policy or has not violated policy. I believe that the background of the media is important to do that, and I hope that that won't go away uh, when you go to your uh, city-only residency, that it will be clearly understood that that background is in the 90s, there was a game, Magic the Gathering, a very popular card game, and the world champion of that game was from Rochester. That game was struck with a cheating scandal, and the player from Rochester was never accused of cheating. In fact, everyone said it. Everyone else on the tour may be cheating, but we know he's not. And he was asked by National Magazine, how come you have avoided that at all times? And he said, because I act at all times, in all ways, as if I'm not a cheater. Now this applies here. If we want the Civilian Review Board to look like it's independent, we have to consider and have it act in all ways, at all times, like it's independent. It needs to have credibility, and that's the best way to do it. There have been problems in our police department here in Rochester for years. 25 years ago, a chief was indicted for doctoring evidence. We've had shootings that were considered to be wrong. It's provided two absolutely excellent award-winning documentaries to Davey Vargas. And the problems continue today. I'm not going to go over them. I'm just going to say that there appears in the public's mind that there might be a problem. If we, and the police department has a culture, and that culture protects its own. If we want this process to succeed, we have to make sure it's independent. And we can do this. If six officers, sergeants and lieutenants, are assigned to work on this in the PSS, we could instead use that 600 almost $700,000 that those officers make, put those officers on the street to do the job of policing, and use that money instead for hiring independent lawyers and investigators, maybe 50-50 to work with police officers on this, but in some way to get independent investigators who are not police officers to work on this, and the money is there. As long as the police handle all aspects of this investigation, it's still going to remain suspect. And nothing about advocates are going to change that. The secret, of course, is to find that money and to find ways to liberate that money so that we can do this. And that's something I believe there are members of council who have experience doing. We can afford this, we can do it, and we can make it look independent. And if we do, we can make this process a success. But if not, five years from now, we'll still be talking about the same issue. And honestly, 
I'm very tired of this one. We need to move on to better things. And this is the best time we've had to change it and fix it. So please, let's do it right. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to start off with some Webster's quotes. Tyranny is defined as the arbitrary or unrestricted exercise of power characterized by an explicit abuse of authority. Now, it seems to me that when we mention these nice little acronyms like CRB, we're actually talking about something akin to the police continuing to investigate themselves and discipline themselves with the ultimate power to discipline my, the chief still. So, I don't understand why we're even calling this a civilian review board when it's still just the same old bullshit, okay? If you guys want to sit here and play around like you're going to reform yourselves into discipline, well then how about we just be open about it? This needs to be independent and not the chief just handing out little slaps on the wrist. And while we're at it, why don't we have uh, an investigation that isn't done by ex-cops that probably aren't that straight anyway. And while we're at it, why don't we start talking about the actual structure of power within the executive branch of Rochester City Government? Because the way it seems to me is that um, you, Shepard, got a nice little puppet hand in your back, which is ultimately followed up the arm to Mayor Richards, who actually controls, the, oh my god, the entire executive branch. So when you guys like to talk about, uh, oh, the, the city council already has the power to subpoena. Well, excuse me for not trusting you guys to do your freaking jobs, okay? Um, another thing I kind of like to talk about is the fact that when a cop acts out of line, there is literally no recourse for a civil person, a civilian who they're meant to serve, there's no recourse for them other than to sue. Now that just seems vastly inadequate and, and highly inefficient and all this money just gets funneled down into the endless depths of the executive branch. Meanwhile, people are starving and getting the shit beat out of them all over the city and I'm tired of it! So, excuse me if I yell, I'm awful passionate about this and I'd really like to see something real when it comes to protecting my fucking civil rights other than just these elected corrupt politicians playing the same old fucking games they've been playing since the beginning of time. And I am not going to put up with it any longer, so if you people aren't going to pass this properly, and if you're not going to do this the right way, I will, I guess, just have to light the city on fire and have maybe a couple thousand people demanding that you guys do your jobs instead of just sitting here twiddling your thumbs and playing with your dicks, okay? I'm tired of it. Thank you. I'm sure Mr. Carlson will put himself accountable for uh, his misbehavior by his own investigation. Um, I'm just gonna keep things real simple, some basic fundamentals here. Um, what we're here for trying to accomplish is the protection of the civilians against tyranny. Bottom line, um, when our founding forefathers came up with the concept for an executive branch of government, tyranny was something that was on their minds and that they knew they would have to protect themselves against, which is why they created checks and balances. Here. This is about a, 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 a civilian review board, not a police review board. You know, if, if, uh, if one parent is abusing a child and the child complains to his parent, who's there to protect him? We're, we're, we're here fighting tyranny that, you know, may or may not happen. It doesn't even matter. It's for our own protection. Um, our father and fathers knew this very well, and we all know this here today very well, and, and why, that's why we need checks and balances. We need an independent civilian review board, period. Okay, um, good evening, everyone. Um, I know there's been a lot of uh, talking here, 
this evening. And I just wanted to bring something up. I am actually a community advocate, but I hold a um, professional uh, position. And um, also, I know one of the, I might be one of the coolest chaplains, the way I'm dressed right now, no collar or anything, but I am a chaplain in the community, and I have been trying to hold the peace in a whole lot of different areas. Um, my problem here is that I was a peacemaker and then I became a victim. It kind of shocked me a little because I have all of these people that were always complaining about, hey, they're doing this, doing that to me, and I'm saying to myself, they can't be that bad. And then the tables turned and the same thing happened to me. Um, situation happened over, uh, over a year ago where these cops were actually violating a couple of guys. One was related to me, one wasn't. Um, it all started over a few, you know, don't want to believe it, but it all started over a Red Bull can. Red Bull energy drink can that was in a yard. Cops pulled over, um, told the guy he was going to get the ticket because the can was in the yard. Um, later on, they called me, told me come because my son was in the car. They said my son wasn't arrested, but he was in handcuffs and they violated him by doing a little slow rub search on him. Let my son go, told my son not to say anything because we didn't want any bloodshed. We're walking up the stairs, I'm knocked down, I get a big gash in my knee from the police officers because my son turned around and said he was going to be filing a complaint. Okay, I'm walking around with scars on my leg for what these cops did to me. I go on vacation to a family reunion two weeks later. Um, I get a letter in the mail saying because I filed a complaint, because I personally filed a complaint, they lied on a federal document and stated that I resisted arrest. This is my regular height. I don't have on heels. These guys were like 250, 300 pounds. Okay? Ran into my bank, knocked me down, broke a couple of fingernails, gashed in a leg. My problem is that if I did something like that as a citizen and filed a false document, I would be charged with a felony. They sent me a sweet little letter in the mail back in July telling me they're sorry for my loss, but there's nothing they can do about my case. Why did they take 12 months, <coughs> not having to October 2nd, to try to secure an attorney to sue in federal court? Because I will try to sue. All right, I filed a notice of claim before the statute of limitation. Um, other than that, I don't know what to say. You know, I mean, they're not being charged, but it's a federal offense to file a false document, plus they committed, I would say, perjury because they saved themselves, but I'm still suffering. And a lot of people in the community are still suffering because the first thing they would do is file a document stating that you resisted arrest and you obstructed government administration. Plus, me being a professional and a government employee myself, that went on my record on my job, and thank God I still have my job because I had to not accept, I pled not guilty, received an ACD, had to do 16 hours of community service, which I do every day as a chaplain, really, but this is how they get me. So all I'm asking you, Chief, is that if you would personally do me a favor, and I'm a clergy, well respected, to not uphold your offices in the wrong, have a different procedure in place like what um, um, Mr. McFadden is talking about. Love because that was unjustified, okay? And they also provoke a lot of citizens into saying things to them like my son, too, so that they can be arrested. So just take it from me, law-abiding citizen, this is what happened to me. And there are a lot of attorneys that are telling you it's a hard thing to actually sue these cops, but every time I look at the scar on my once beautiful legs, mm -hmm. you know, um, it brings back memory. It's, it's scarring me mentally, okay? Thank you very much. Good afternoon. I'm going to read what I was going to say. All right, Chief Shepherd. The paper, the Democratic Chronicle, stated that a study was done regarding the Civilian Review Board recently with input from different agencies. I really don't know what agencies or groups that you had contact with, 
But I do know that the United Church of Ministry, which is Reverend Shirley Doug Bell, you know, the Justice for All, which is my um, program, have had any contact from anyone. The UCM, the late Reverend Graves, along with myself, JPC, and the Justice Center, were all active participants in trying to get a civilian review board in Rochester that was not controlled by the police department, internal affair, and would consist of citizens from outside the department. It would have had two citizens appointed by the mayor, two from an outside agency such as UCM, and one from the police department. This board would be charged with the duty of reviewing, reviewing complaints and making recommendations as to disciplinary actions after the police department had completed its own investigation and made a disciplinary recommendation. A true civilian review board usually reviewed the same material or a redact version of what the internal or professional standard examined. Although a civilian review board could be given investigation power in order to conduct its own inquiry into the complaints, such authorities could include subpoena power and the ability to administer oath and compel the productions or producing documents. I traveled all over the United States and Canada attending other civilian review boards programs, so I know what I'm talking about. Although many law enforcement community may oppose this type of civilian review board, believing that outsiders are less, less knowledgeable in police affairs and should not be allowed judging them, yet a study of 17 law enforcement agencies throughout the United States found that citizen review boards sustain police brutality complaints at a higher percentage than do the police themselves. It also suggests that such boards operate more fairly, although the sustained rate is only one means by which to measure possible success of the civilian review board. It deters excessive force, abusive language, harassment. It does combat tension and improve law enforcement. Minorities often do not view the police in a favorable light. Minorities will no longer look at the police as them entity, and their fears and mistrust may dim diminish. Once fear dissipate and relations improve, it does render law enforcement more effectively, as citizens <coughs> will aid the police in establishing strategic and may be more forthcoming in reporting crimes or their suspicions of crime being committed in their neighborhood. A person serving on the board should not exceed one year as a member, and the chair should not serve more than two years. The board must be established as a permanent statutory agency, and the people serving on the board needs to be representative of the community that are having the problem. And I talked to the chief, and I talked to Adam, I'm sorry, Mr. McFadden, and a lot of other people regarding Loretta, regarding problems that are in our community. I'm not a newcomer to the field. I'm one of those age people in the community. But I do have problems. Then I do get on the phone. The only problem I have right now is that when I call the chief, he never answers the phone. I, I give him dues that he got somebody, Patrick Pan, who's excellent advocate for him. But other than that, the problems are still <laughs> accelerating in our community and they're only getting worse. And it's not all the police officers, it's only 2%. But those 2% make it look like it's a humongous amount of police officers. I take my hat off to the police department. Mm -hmm. I take, up, yeah, I'm going to wrap up and say this. I take my hat off because they have a hard job. In the past, we didn't have police officers who were getting shot down or shot at. Now we do. Our kids are getting out of hand. And I'm not taking that away from the police officers who are doing their job. What I'm saying is we want respect. We need respect. And we want our children to be respected. I have no prepared speech, so everything I'm about to say is just coming right from where I am right now. And um, having had the privilege of listening to so many passionate folks, including Mr. Krauss, um, I stand here now feeling angrier than when I arrived. And so I just wanted to say, first of all, before I say what I really want to say was that um, the word that comes to me before any other word in this respect is the word community. And the word community, in the word community, is, uh, is implicit the word we. And a community is not a community if it's we versus them.
the way the police is set up. The police department now is set up, it's we versus them. And um, police chief, you are the main you. Uh, you do not have a relationship with people in this town. They do not trust you. Any process here that involves you making the final decisions is not going to work. Um, any, you're, you're doing the discipline, you're arbitrating discipline, it is not going to work. The city is not going to buy it. Something else that was on here on the recommendations that's parked, this really disturbs me. This is parked. The um, information that says additional conflict resolution training for the police. I think that is vital to where the city is right now. And to see that being parked, that should be number one. Um, and let me tell you about how grateful I am that I got to spend a night in jail after being arrested for um, being part of the Occupy movement. Um, when I did, I, the next morning while we we're waiting to be arraigned, we got to spend about an hour and a half in a, in a cell with seven women and who were also waiting to be arraigned. And of those women, two of those very young women, one of them was her 19th birthday, the other one looked younger, um, should not have been there. They were brought in because police came along to a situation and rather than figure out what went on and how they could help out, they simply arrested them. One young woman was trying to enter a house where a crime had taken place where her six-month-old baby was, and she wanted to get her child, and she was instead maced and arrested. Um, she was not allowed to get her child. The other one was a young woman who had been molested by her uncle who was fighting over a, um, a house that her mother, who was deceased, had um, willed her. But her uncle went to that house, he got a restraining order against her, she was arrested for, for violating the restraining order. Both these young women were there because policemen who did, were not trained in conflict resolution um, didn't know how to deal with it. So what did they do? They arrested them and said, well, let the courts figure this out. And then what happens? We've got women, young women who are now in the court system. We have a court system that is now tied up in more money more time, and uh, a young woman who didn't have to, didn't have to be involved in a court system, and didn't have to be introduced to the pain and suffering that they now have. Um, so, my, my addition to everything else, which is independent means independent, and community means community, is conflict resolution, and mediation, restorative justice is extremely important in this process and it should not be tabled. We could not make a decision on it in the time frame that we had. Some of it was budgetary reasons, meaning we passed a budget that did not reflect enough money in it to do an uh, entire investigative system that would be separate from the police department. So I, I want to be very clear that because something is parked does not mean that we will not address it. It just means that we could not address it at this time. Um, also, uh, in terms of the next steps for us, the council will look at these recommendations. I made this exact presentation to them. They had uh, just as many questions and comments and concerns as the audience did. What we presented to you was what the committee came out with. Um, and some, sometimes, even some of the things on there were not my wish personally, but it was the group's wish. And that's what we came out with. So the council will review this information. They will make decisions based on the report that I provided to them. I uh, would encourage folks to reach out to council members and have discussions with them. Um, and I would also like to thank people for being respectful and listening to everyone. The only way that we're really going to fix this problem is if we listen to each other and take seriously what each other That's what we're trying said. to say. Can you hear us now? Again, this is what I'm talking about. Look, we've been... This is what I'm talking about. There's a process in place, especially to occupy Rochester, folks. When I came to meet with you, you had a process for speaking, right? There's a process in here for speaking as well. And I'm just asking people to follow that. It doesn't mean that you cannot talk to me when we're done. I'm just asking people to be respectful. That's it. I don't think that's a hard ask. I think when people so are, we, when people are angry again, and they've been abused, we it's very hard for people to do. We put this together 
and we'll have this reviewed by the council. I encourage you to talk to council members if you have additional concerns. God bless. Good night. Thank you for coming out.